Hey, this is Warren Haynes of Government Mule, and you're driving home with the blues with Irene B. on Karen's FM 89.1. I am sitting here with Warren Haynes from Government Mule, and I am happy to say I saw the whole show ah. last night, and uh, I loved it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, it was a great show. And I want to tell you that the last time I saw you, this is, will come as a bit of a surprise, I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, oh, wow. in 2013, at a place called Maya Garden. Mm -hmm. Sure. Do you remember it? I do, yeah. Yeah, okay. So I was, in 2013, I took a bit of a blues trip over there. I was away for six weeks, and I went to a whole lot of different states. And my friends, the Rusty Wright Band, who I was staying with, yeah. they, they said, oh, well, we're going to treat you to um, a government mule concert. And, uh, and treat themselves at the same time. So Wonderful. there you go. So I just thought we'd start with that. Oh, good. That's nice. Yeah. That, that's a nice place. Yeah. yeah. Fun place to play. It is a nice place. It was a lovely day as yeah. well. Yeah. Everybody out there sitting on the hill. That was my first experience of an outdoor concert in the USA. Oh, wonderful. Yes. But anyway, getting back to Byron Bay and uh, Blues Fest. So it's great to, to have you here. And it's great that I got to see you on the first night yeah yeah so we, we enjoyed last night and tonight of course will will be completely different which is government mule tradition we we play a different show every night yeah um, but we had a, a fun fun night last night the crowd was very cool and uh, we're honored to be back yes yeah well it's lovely to have you back and I just by coincidence today I was sitting over there at the uh, the Gibson uh, guitar tent and Lucas Nelson was there. Yeah. Yeah, so we were having a bit of a chat and he said, well, you know, he knows you guys really well and uh, he uh, was was there yeah, as a guest last yeah, night. Yeah, and he's going to join us tonight as well. As well. Yeah. He's a lovely guy. Yeah. yeah I've known him for a, a long time. Yeah. And I uh, love his music and love his spirit. So we had a lot of fun. We, we played together in Sydney and Melbourne as well. Right. And then the two nights here, and then of course I, I go home tomorrow. You go home tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. It's a long, it's a long plane ride, isn't it? It is, yeah. 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 So, look, I want to um, just backtrack a bit. Oh, you I mean, it would take for hours to sort of go through the, the, your musical history. Um, so, uh, tell me, you know, what has been the highlight, would you say, or one of the highlights? of your musical career? Well, I've been so f fortunate, you know, once I joined the Allman Brothers in 1989, uh, everything changed immensely and suddenly these opportunities were arising to play with people like Eric Clapton and Bob Dylan and a lot of my blues heroes, some of which are no longer around. I got to play with John Lee Hooker and Willie Dixon and Albert Collins and people that I grew up listening to, you know. Uh, we, we were lucky enough, or you, I guess I was lucky enough in the 25 years that I played with the Allman Brothers <clears throat> to do the Woodstock reunion in 94, which was really amazing, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. Um, there, we had a lot of Grammy nominations, but finally won a couple. Uh, which was very nice, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't care much about those sort of things. But then further down the line, you realize, well, it's nice to be acknowledged for your hard work, you yes, know. Yeah. But I think the thing that's been most influential to me is being able to play with so many people that I grew up uh, listening to. And, and it's always fun to share the stage with, with someone for the first time and uh, a lot of magic happens. Yeah. You know? And I, I noticed with a lot of artists, because this is my third Blues Fest, I, was, I had 2014 last year and yeah. this year, and, and a lot of the artists are, are as excited as we are to see you, because they get to, to see a lot of their friends who are playing with you know, the bands yeah. and they get them up on stage, you know, and the, yeah. Well, these things are a bit like a reunion, you know, I'm seeing people that I haven't seen in years and... Uh, it's it's nice to rekindle old friendships, and sometimes that turns into performing together, or or at least hanging out, you know. But all the these festival environments 
uh, for the musicians, it's a chance to catch up with people that maybe you haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Now, I was lucky enough to get to see Greg Oldman perform here at Fest. Yeah. Fest. And it was, he was fantastic. It was such a great performance. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, Devin Oldman's been out here on a regular basis. Yep. And I've yep. interviewed him a couple of times now. Uh, he's a lovely guy. Yep. And, um, and then, of course, there's Michael Oldman. He's, uh, but, yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, what a history. So um, what, what, what kind of age were you when you actually did start playing anyway? I started singing first when oh. I was about seven or eight. And I was just listening to soul music, you know, the Four Tops and the Temptations and uh, Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder and Sam and Dave and uh, James Brown was my first hero, you know. But then when I discovered rock music, uh, that's what wanted me. That's what made me want to play guitar. Hearing uh, Cream and Jimi Hendrix and Johnny Winter and stuff like that, uh, and then. I realized that I'd always loved B.B. King's voice before I realized that that was blues. I just, you know, I, I was so focused on voices when I was growing up and the singers. Mm. And I, eventually I thought, oh, I love the fact that he, he plays and sings equally well and Ray Charles the same way. So I always wanted to be someone that, that focused equally on playing and singing. Uh, and so I, I listened to, to a little bit of everything. I had two older brothers. One brother had jazz records and blues records, and the other one had rock and folk and soul music. And so the, I was exposed to a lot of music. Yeah, and, and now you you are so many um, uh, guitarists. Uh, he, you're their hero now. You know, it's like it guitarists. Makes me feel old, but yeah, uh, but, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. But, very honored to uh, to get to see you again here you know and especially last night because i mean it's just going to get more and more and more crowded every day yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah i was amazed tonight when we or today when we drove in how many more people were here today so yeah, yeah. and so it, what sort of uh, advice would you give to young guitarists today well there's two pieces of advice i would give one is unless you're completely obsessed with music and you know it's what you want to do for the rest of your life, then just enjoy it for what it is and don't put the pressure on yourself of making a living mm -hmm. through music. But if you know that you're going to do it, then you have to give 110% all the time. Uh, the other thing I would say is listen to every genre of music. Don't close yourself off to only things that you think uh, you like at the time. The more you broaden your horizons and your scope of influences, the the better you will be served. Yes. And, and so I, I, I always tell young musicians, don't just listen to the last 10 years or the last 20 years. You gotta go 30, 40, 50 years back. You gotta listen to everything. Okay, right. It's, it's a couple of things was on my mind that we've got the wind up, have we? <laughs> okay, oh, already. <laughs> All right. Well, um, anyway, one more thing I'll, I'll just add, and you can just give me your. Someone once said to me, you know, when did I find the blues? And I said, well, the blues found me. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's probably what your take is on that. To some well, point. yeah, because uh, you know, soul music, which was my first love was born out of black gospel music the same way blues was born out of black gospel music. So I discovered that uh, before I was even a teenager. Um, but the connection emotionally that yeah. that music uh, is, is makes on anyone is undeniable. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank My you pleasure. so much. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you.